Loaded stretching is the most trending flexibility method today. Loaded stretching. Loaded stretching. Loaded stretching. The problem is that it's the least effective way to get flexible, while at the same time, it's the most intense. So why does the most popular method today rank at the bottom of the list with the most effective ways to get flexible? To get to that, we need to start from the top. What exactly is loaded stretching? Most people think that it's just stretching with weights. But it's not that simple since there are many ways to do loaded stretching. However, the practice that is mostly promoted today has a unique objective that changes everything. For the worse. This unique objective is to use loads heavy enough to push your body beyond your current limits, supposedly to increase flexibility while also strengthening your entire range. So there are two key elements on this concept. One, aiming to move past your regular range, and two, using loads heavy enough to get you there. In theory, this might sound like a great idea. However, in practice, it's terribly ineffective for flexibility gains. The main reason for these poor results is that this practice violates fundamental principles of effective flexibility training. Let me explain. To get flexible fast, you need to train close to your desired training range at least 2-3 to three times per week. For example, if on the side split this range is at 150cm width, you need to train close to that to keep getting results. However, to do that, you need to have zero soreness. Muscle soreness, often referred to as DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness, is the ache you feel in the days following an intense workout. And the first thing that soreness does is restrict your range. For example, assuming that you usually train at 150cm width, when you're sore, you might reach only 140. This is a big problem for flexibility training since stretching at a shorter range will not get you anywhere near your goals. So, as a general rule when trying to get flexible fast is to avoid soreness as much as possible. And here is where loaded stretching ruins progress. There are two main rules that you need to follow to minimize soreness and loaded stretching breaks both of them. And honestly, I've seen time and time again people miss their goals simply by ignoring these two rules, so make sure to remember them. The first rule is to gradually increase both the stretching and contraction intensity of your workouts. These terms might sound strange, but they represent two simple parts of your training. Stretching intensity is how hard you stretch, with 10% being the lightest feeling of a stretch, and 100% being your max and of course your most painful spot. On the other side, contraction intensity is how hard you contract in contraction-based methods like the one I presented in previous videos. 100% contraction intensity is your maximum voluntary effort in bodyweight drills or the maximum weight you can lift when using external loads. Now the first rule is to gradually increase both through a large training period. However, the second and most important rule is that even when you gradually increase them, you should avoid training with both at maximum. So as you work your way to your goals, make sure to slightly reduce the contraction intensity when stretching at your max. Following these two rules will help you avoid soreness and elevate your training process. However, loaded stretching is the complete polar opposite of these rules. Since its basic idea is to use enough weight to push your body beyond your current limits, you're immediately led over that with a significant external weight that forces you also to a maximum contraction intensity in every rep. Exercising at these end ranges with heavy loads will skyrocket your soreness every time. This is not only common sense, but also something that has been repeatedly shown in the literature. Numerous studies have shown that loading the end range positions increases soreness compared to mid range activities. However, supporters of loaded stretching disagree with this. They claim that if you consistently train at your end range, your body will adapt and stop getting sore. But unfortunately, this doesn't work when you're in the process of getting flexible, simply because your max range continuously changes. You simply can't get accustomed to a range that is always new. So yes, you could, for example, get accustomed to the 100 degrees hip flexion, but since you're always trying for more, you're supposed to train at new ranges continuously and do it with a great deal of intensity. This will skyrocket your soreness every time. 
okay, so we know that load stretching increases soreness, and soreness is bad for flexibility gains. But just how bad is it? To give you a perspective of how disastrous this could be to your training, while you should be training 2-3 to three times per week at an effective training range, soreness can reduce your ability to reach that range for 6-10 to 10 days. This way, you're lucky if you get one effective session per week. This leads to doing fewer workouts that are also interrupted by big time periods with reduced range. In addition, what I've seen in practice is that more often people will not wait until they are fully recovered and keep pushing. This leads to a state of long-lasting soreness that makes their muscles feel like tight ropes. At that stage, this end range discomfort persists even after resting for several days. And by the time they realize they're on a plateau, it's already late. Now, those who keep up with my Instagram account might be thinking, OK, Yanis, if loaded stretching is so bad, why are there posts of you doing it? I can explain. That's a bad line. Seriously now, there is a much less popular way to do loaded stretching that actually worth your attention. It's still not a good way to increase your flexibility, but it's a great way to develop your strength in your current range, and that's why I include it in my programs. This less popular practice follows the exact opposite rules of the popular loaded stretching. Rule 1. Move only within your current range, don't push for more. And Rule 2. Use progressively lighter loads as you train closer to your limits to reduce the stress at the end range positions. These two rules completely transform loaded stretching from an intense technique that ruins your entire training to an efficient activity that can smoothly develop your full range strength. However, as I said, still not a method that I would use to increase flexibility. Of course, people who are just starting out can see some gains with such methods, but beginners can see results with almost anything. And of course, these results are only a fraction of what they could get by training with a combination of the most effective methods. Now, if you're wondering which method sits at the top of my list for flexibility gains, it's the contract passive range. If you're unfamiliar with this method, you can learn all about it in this next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.